Stage 10 of the Giro d'Italia was the final day before the rest day. It was also the shortest road stage of the Giro d'Italia, leaving L'Aquila heading to Foligno, seen most recently of a victory in a sprint for Andre Greipel. And on paper, it looked as though a sprint was going to be the final outcome today. Valico della Somma, the only king of the mountains climb to take on. Foligno may be exposed to the wind later in the day too. Didn't take too long for the day's breakaway to form. Once Horber Gosens was across, it was a five-man break, but they weren't given too much rope by the chasing peloton. They weren't given help either by a train that came across and chopped a minute off their advantage. Peloton not having to stop and therefore not the same time able to be taken. The gap was going to come down even further when Bora Hansgrohe started applying the pressure. Some sprinters dropped, breakaway taken in, 43 k's to go and everyone back together. Following Grunewegen would be Medlir, Decker would also be dropped, as would Giacomo Nizzolo a little further on. Sagan was grimacing but still there, Nizzolo fighting to get back on, but the man who'd finished second in Foligno five years ago was unable to make it. That despite the help of the world hour record holder. Inside the final 20 kilometers and an opportunity for bonus seconds at the final intermediate sprint. The Koenig quick set were trying to lead out Remco Evenepoel. Jonathan Narvaez reacted brilliantly and cleverly for Ineos. Evenepoel took two, Bernal took the one. Inside the final kilometer, there was a crash from Max Cantor that held up the GC riders. They would get the same time with an incident involving everybody inside the last three Ks. That left the sprinters who were left to sprint it out to the line. Molano leading it out. Gaviria not following him and staying behind Sagan. Sagan hitting the front around the final corner. And once he was there at the front, nobody would come around him. Peter Sagan on top of the pile at the Giro d'Italia and finishing off a brilliant team job taken up with 60 kilometers remaining. Gaviria finished second, Chimolai would end the day in third with Oldani and Vermeersch in fourth and fifth. Sagan's win would take him into the Malia Ciclamino, leading the points classification. Gaviria yet again beaten, Cimolai yet to win a stage at the Giro d'Italia, and Viviani only just making the top 10. Egan Bernal would keep the pink jersey. His lead down to 14 seconds over Remco Evenepoel, with Evenepoel picking up a second back. However, Bernal himself also getting a second on the rest of the field. Those bonuses could become important after three weeks. Sagan's points classification lead, exactly what he came to the Giro for. But could he hold on to it after the rest day? Stage 11 going from Perugia to Montalcino. He'll be raising a glass of its famous Brunello after a stage on the Strade Bianche. Over 30 kilometers on gravel roads. Everybody looking nervous at the forecast and seeing if there'd be a repeat of the brown roads of 11 years previous. Montalcino, some climbing and some off-roading. The Giro d'Italia enters its second week with a very big day. Make sure you watch on Wednesday. Anything can happen. The Giro could definitely be lost.